Hey guys, so Chaco Chen here. Um, I've been feeling off for a few days, so I'm gonna take a test. What kind of test do you ask? This kind of test. So, okay, it's been a couple of minutes. Let's see what the result is. So it's been a little while. I'm trying to think where I left you off at. Uh, probably was like right after the pregnancy test <laughs> result, which was positive. Uh, to be honest, I was a little bit nervous to tell Maki because we hadn't really planned for a third baby. And this was a total surprise. And we told the kids, I didn't get any of the reactions on camera because I was a little bit like nervous about it, honestly. It's just real life. Anyway, um, so I went to my first doctor's appointment later that week and I got the ultrasound and this is what it looks like. It's pretty weird, huh? This is what a baby looks like at six weeks development. It's so tiny, but yet so well formed. Like I can't believe how clearly you can see everything. Of course, we don't know what we're having yet. Um, any guesses as to what we'll be having? I'll put a poll out sometime after we announce our pregnancy on this channel. A lot of people keep saying, oh, you're going to have a girl this time. But they said that the last two times I was pregnant too, and it was not a girl, it was a boy. So <laughs> we'll see, I guess. So that puts my due date at around October 11th. It's interesting. The last three babies I was pregnant with, all of their due dates were in October. <laughs> I guess my body likes October babies for some reason. So yeah, we'll see if the baby actually makes it that long. Uh, I have a feeling it's gonna be born earlier. My last two kids were born earlier. So hopefully it's born in September. That can just break up the birthdays a little bit by months. In Japan, when you get pregnant, you have to go and report it to your city hall. And the reason is because most uh, health insurance in Japan doesn't cover pregnancy. They don't see pregnancy as like a health condition, so they don't cover it. But instead of that, the government and like the local, um, like your local prefecture's government provides you these coupons, which um, will pay for like your prenatal appointments. And then you get money from the government after you give birth. So I think it's like yonjisan man en grai. So like around $4,300, which is like a pretty good chunk, but in Japan, there's two different types of hospitals. Well, I guess technically three. So there's like a public hospital, which is like bigger places, usually closer to the centers of cities. Then there's like private clinics or women's clinics, which is where I'm going to be going to. And then there's also like these uh, kind of like midwifery birth centers. I'm going to go to a private women's clinic. It happens to be right down the road from where we live. So it's very convenient for us. So um, I went to my first doctor's appointment and confirmed the pregnancy and like it was very interesting like they they're so polite in Japan, like they congratulate you right away. In Japan, you get an ultrasound basically every time you go to the doctor, which is different from America. In America, you don't get it, you usually get it like once in the first trimester, once in the second trimester, like to do the gender identification, and then maybe in the third trimester, especially like if they suspect there's an issue going on with the pregnancy, but usually you don't get that many ultrasounds. But in Japan, you get ultrasounds all the way through, which is kind of reassuring for me. I'm a little bit nervous, obviously, because as we explained in this video, um, this is technically my fourth pregnancy. It's my fourth baby. We lost our second child who was stillborn when I was 37 weeks pregnant. And that experience was pretty, heavy, pretty difficult. So of course I had to explain that to them at the doctor and 
they understood what happened then and what risks I possibly might be facing. He didn't seem to be too worried because we had a healthy child right after that. So it was just that time was bad luck, I guess. But anyway, in Japan, you will get that um, like a stipend of like around yonju san mayen, um, even if you miscarry or you have a stillborn birth. So that's nice. The government supports families here. Of course, it probably is going to be end, end up being more expensive, especially to give birth at a private women's clinic. So we'll probably have to pay a little bit extra, but it seems like the government's going to pay a good chunk of the delivery costs. So after we confirmed the pregnancy, then the clinic told me to go to my shiakshou, my local city hall, and declare the pregnancy and then get a boshteicho, which is this thing here. So it's like a basically an information booklet that covers like your whole pregnancy and it gives you like information and like milestones and dates to note and stuff like that. Like their vaccinations, like tracks my whole pregnancy. And then it goes all the way up to age six. So whenever we take the baby to the doctor after it's born, we'll bring this along and then they'll record everything that medically goes on with the child in here. So it's a very organized system. It's way better than America, I mean. Yeah, I'm surprised at how efficient and what a good job they do to track everything. But um, each prefecture's boshiteicho looks different. I've seen friends who live in Osaka, theirs is different than this one, but yeah, this is not as one. So yeah, I have to bring this every time I go to the doctor. And then the city also gives you this coupon booklet here. And inside, basically you have these tickets and every time you go to the doctor, you pay for your appointment using these tickets. So like each one is 2,500 yen. I'm sure the doctors have figured out their pricing to kind of make it work with these coupon tickets. So like first I need to use up all these yellow orangish ones. And then if I go over that, then I can use the white tickets. But this is supposed to cover like most of the pregnancy. So we don't have to really pay anything else out of pocket. And they gave me this maternity calendar, which shows you so detailed, it's like all what's going on with the baby. This being my fourth baby, like definitely things pop a lot sooner. I mean, like with each pregnancy, I felt things popping out much sooner. So like I'm wearing really loose clothes right now. You can see like this is the belly situation in here. It's a little bit of a pooch going on. As far as how I've been feeling, I'm really sick all the time. I can't cook at all. I've only wanted to eat like cold food, like fruit and sandwiches. But every week it changes like what my tastes are. So it's really hard to make meals for the family because like just the smell of cooking, like the oil and like any sort of strong flavors like onion, garlic or meat. I just can't stand to be around it. It sends me right to the bathroom. So um, for the first time ever, we decided to hire a housekeeper to come once a week and she's gonna cook some meals for us and do a little bit of cleaning because I just haven't had the energy to really stay on top of the cleaning either. So but going back to what we get from the Nara city, so like they gave us this huge packet along with the Bosch Tejo and the coupon booklet. And inside is like a whole bunch of information, like all these pregnancy tickets and stuff like that. So let me show you what we got. So it's like a little book about pregnancy, things that you can record in here, um, medicines, things like that that you're taking, There's information and advertisements. They have other stuff about raising a child in Nara. There's all these resources and information you can go to. It's so cute, everything's deer themed. Can you see? <laughs> apply for the uh, yochian yeah that's another thing is when you go go have a baby in japan a lot of people right away if they need child care they have to like register like basically from the time they find out they're pregnant because waiting lists are super long and like there's no guarantee that you can get a spot in a child care center so for example if you need to go back to work but you can't find a spot for your child you might have to like lose your job or lose time from work typically i think women get about a year of maternity leave here but of course some people choose to go back sooner oh they have like a little food um recommendation and just like all about how to raise a child in here there's a little handbook a guidebook about what you should do with a baby this is like my third child so 
I probably don't need to, this much information, I think I've got it down at this point, but you know, for new parents, this is great. This is talking about like um, raising a child, like and what things are available in the area. Here's like pre uh, maps of the prefecture, where's the parks, where's like indoor play places, all kinds of things in here. And they even have a book for dads, for helpful information for dads for raising a kid. Like, this is cute, like how the dad can help when <laughs> the mom's in labor or something, <laughs> giving birth. It talks all about how to give birth and stuff, so that's cute. And then here's one about like different types of illnesses that a child might have and like how you can treat it, what you should do. Yeah, it's so thorough. And then look, they give you this. It's like a little sticker. It's like a maternity mark, they call it. And you can put this on. Look, this looks like this one is for your car. So that's nice. So I can park in like maternity parking spaces and it just alerts other drivers that there's a pregnant lady in the car. And then this thing is the thing that's most useful. It's the maternity mark. It's like a little keychain that goes on your bag. So if you're on public transportation, it allows you to sit in priority seats and it alerts people around you that you're pregnant. And if they're nice, they'll give you a seat. I used this before when I was pregnant with Leo here and people were super nice. Like as soon as I put this badge on my bag, people would always like move over and give me a seat. So that was nice. And it's also it comes attached with like this mama kind of magazine thing that has a lot of coupons and stuff like that for maternity items. Yeah, so as you can see, Japan is really detailed in their like maternity care, even though technically it's not covered under health insurance, it's still um, the city that you live or the prefecture that you live in is gonna give you a lot of perks and benefits and help offset the costs because Japan, um, I think, just recently they announced the data is that the population is on a steady decline again so i think they're really trying to encourage families to have children um so like they're trying to make it as easy as possible and yeah like i definitely did not get this much support in america <laughs> like when i was pregnant it was more like oh you're pregnant okay see you for your monthly appointment <laughs> and that was kind of it you're just left alone so <laughs> but in japan like i feel like i'm well taken care of i feel like there's a lot of support. I think some people would argue maybe there's not enough support, especially considering how expensive the cost of living is here for families, especially the closer to a city, a big city that you live. Luckily out here in Nara, we're pretty safe or uh, there's a lot of space here and it's cheaper to raise a family. Right now, things that I'm doing are, well, I'm just trying to rest a lot because I have so little energy and can't really eat that much. I lost like at least one kilo in two weeks because of just how much of a lack of an appetite I have. So that's where we are right now. Uh, <laughs> sorry if I feel a little bit like ganky now in this video. I just haven't had that much energy and just feeling nauseous all day long. It's been pretty challenging, but this is real life and I'm just trying to make the most of it and make the best of this time. There's a lot of uncertain things in the world going on right now. Um, everything seems a little scary and uncertain, but I don't know, this child chose to come here for a reason, I guess, and they picked us as a family, so we have to make the best of it and we have to do our best to take care of them and make sure that they are born into a world that's worth being born into. So those are my thoughts for now. You'll be seeing this long after the fact, of course, but this is what's going on right now. So I'm gonna sign off for now and I will see you next time. Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights